Hey everybody, it's been a little while, but we are back in the garage. We're going to show you today how to pull the motor from an E65. This is actually an E65 grind by weight. E65 and E80 are very similar, so the process will be pretty much the same. After we pull the motor, we're going to pull the gears, or what Malcona calls the transmission, and uh, then reassemble. All right, let's get started. Loosen the screws three or four turns. Be able to unlock the lid. Take the adjustment ring off. Then you have four pairs or eight screws that we would like to remove. Power board, unplug hopper safety. Residue tray and cover. And put your hand underneath the motor. Oh, pull the spout because the spout will hang the motor up a little bit. Grab the top of the motor, come from the bottom, push up, turn the motor upside down, set it right behind the grinder after you do that there's a temperature screw temperature grounding line that you should remove all right once you have the motor out, out the next thing you're going to want to do is remove the three screws that are down in the wells at the top. After that, the next challenge is this piece right here locks all the gears when the lock's not on or the motor's out there's two little metal barrels or uh, studs right here that act as a hinge you have to press down take a small flat tip get behind the edge and pry it out you do that on both sides and you can grab the barrel Pull them out. Underneath the device is also a small spring in the center. Don't lose that. Now that you've taken the three screws out of the top of those little wells, you're able to rotate the grinder in its mount and pull it off the piece it was hanging from. Now you can rotate the motor, remove it from the mount that it hangs from. Next thing you're gonna need to do is unlock this three millimeter hex key. It's usually pretty tight. And under that, here on the GBW, you see we have a little uh, a little belt going over to the gear part. We are going to loosen that just so we have a little room to play with. Take the belt off. 
and then I'll see how that moves. And that one's lefty loosey. The screw is actually holding the gear to a metal tapered pin, which meets up with a tapered hole, and that pushes or releases the bottom burr to go up or down. So once you replace the gears that you're having trouble with, you can put them back in. When you do this, you want to screw them all the way in, but what's going to happen, it's going to push your bottom burr against your top burr. It's going to make adjusting difficult in the beginning. All right, that's Put your band back on. There's a little groove there at the end. You're, when you tighten this, you're pulling on it to make the tension for your belt. All right, so now you're ready to put this gear back in. Bring back in, put this down, get the ears in <clears throat> the easiest way, mash down on the back side so that you take the tension off. Take a look, jeez. This one right here goes to the GBW board. That has to be hooked up before it goes back in. All right, let's put these things back in. We've got a ground wire run all the way down here so we can find it after we put the motor back in. You have to feed the power cable from the motor through its mount and you have to keep the GBW board wire from getting pulled out and the hopper safety from getting hung up and when it's in properly it will set all the way down plug up the power board Plug up the hopper safety. Then find the somewhat special screw 
that holds that temperature and grounding rod piece that we ran down to the bottom. Now, fish it back up. There's a hole in the back of the motor. Sometimes it will have screws where it's already been screwed in. Sometimes it won't. And you just make your own threads. There you go. Then when you close it up, you have to push some wires to the side. Make sure that power board cable is not bunching up so that when you get it all in, it's not pushing out real hard like that. You want it not to be pushing the board out. So we'll work on it a little bit. Sometimes you can shove it to the side like that. And that's going to work once we get the screws in. All right, so we have everything back together. One of the important things to do, once you have everything back together, put the metal flapper in first, silicon flapper. If you don't have the metal flapper, don't worry about it. But if the uh, you have the metal flapper, it goes in closest to the grind chamber, silicon flapper closest to the barista. When you go to calibrate, you need to spin the burr and roll the wheel towards you. If you roll this wheel too far away from you, it will unscrew the entire adjustment from the motor and you will have to do what we just did. So, um, you spin the burr, roll it towards you. Spin the burr, roll it towards you. There you go, it's scuffing. I'm gonna show you another way. Another way involves plugging the grinder in. Plug the grinder in. Activate the safety, turn the grinder on. Then about two seconds, the display comes on. Then you can activate the grinder. You get a little bit of noise there. Let's move that so we don't have that noise. To me, leaving it right there, that's calibration and to put the adjustment ring on in the calibrated position there's a small zero stamped here you may or may not see a zero but it is a zero and when you put the deepest cutout on this piece see there's all these little cutouts the one in the middle is deeper you put it on the zero and you're zero all right and you put the top on in the zero well zero lines up with that <clears throat> with the zero on the guide ring tighten the lid down put the motor spout back in there you go
that's how you pull the motor that's how you replace the gears